What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 8 of the tutorial series on Amazon WebSocket API Gateway tutorial. In the previous tutorial, that is part 7, we had covered the DynamoDB integration with the WebSocket API. And now in this tutorial, I will take you through on how to pass a query string parameter while creating a connection with WebSocket API. So uh, the question might arise that why anyone wants to pass the query string parameter while creating or establishing the WebSocket connection. So well, uh, let's look at it this way. For example, you are working on some application. Let's consider a real time dashboard and that application has some login mechanism. So as soon as the user login, the WebSocket connection is created, right? So we are just assuming that uh, it's that kind of uh, implementation, right? So again, as soon as the user login, the WebSocket connection is created, but you also want to pass some other information about the user, let's say an ID token for user identification, or it can be any information like metadata or checkpoint, right? So hence in that case, you can pass the data while creating the connection using query string parameters, right? So this is one of the uh, use case, I would say, uh, where this can be useful. But apart from that, uh, there can be a multiple use case where a user or the developer might need to pass on some query string information to the server, right? So that's where uh, this tutorial will help. So let's get started. So this is the same implementation and this is where we left off in part seven, right? So I will click on this uh, WebSocket connect that is Lambda function or the backend integration for the connect route, right? So here we have WebSocket connect. So what we will do is we will go to API gateway. We will click on stages, click on the deployed stage. But before we go ahead and copy WebSocket URL, let's go to Lambda function and we will simply say print event and save this. So now let's go ahead and copy this WebSocket URL and let's do WS get hyphen C followed by the WebSocket URL. And now here we want to pass the query string parameter, but before that, let's uh, try to run it simply without any query string parameter, just to check whether everything is running fine or not. Right. So here we have the connection and it's connected and we should be having uh, this event within CloudWatch logs. And we will also have the connection ID within DynamoDB, correct? So let me also open DynamoDB. So here we are, we have this event, right? So it contain all the information and here within DynamoDB, within tables, if you remember, then we had created WebSocket table. And if we look into items, then we will have one connection ID. And as soon as we close this connection, this connection ID will be deleted. So now let's go back to terminal and try to pass on few query string parameters. So back to terminal, I will say, so to pass the query string parameter, you have to add question mark at the end of the connection URL and the query string parameter that is, for example, I want to pass token equal to some token, I will say. And you can also pass multiple uh, query string parameters by adding ampersand. And here goes the another query string parameter that might be token one equal to some value. Correct. So you can pass on multiple query string parameter using ampersand. But right now we will go with a single query string parameter and I will say enter. Oh, and it threw an error. It says ZSH no matches found. So this might happen uh, with, I mean, uh, this had happened with me with ZSH, right? So in that case, what you have to do is you have to code this entire URL. Correct. And now if you say enter, then it will be connected. 
Now let's go ahead and have a look at the CloudWatch log, whether we have that query string parameter or not. So here we have another event. Now if I search for query string parameter. So as you can see here we have query string parameters followed by the token that we are passing and its value. That is token colon some token. Now how we can fetch this information within the Lambda function or maybe we want to store this information within DynamoDB. So let's see how we can do that. So we will go back to Lambda function, click on configuration, navigate to function code. Now here we will say query string equal to event dot get, let me copy this, that is query string parameters. So event dot get query string parameters. Now what we want to fetch from that query string parameters that is token, correct? So we will say dot get token. Now we will have that information within QS variable that is query string. I'm commenting line number five that is print event. Now let's go ahead and run this. And then we will come back here to update the DynamoDB table. Correct. So we will add it line number nine. So let's have a look first. So let me close this connection. Let's run again. And now we should be having some token as a value printed within CloudWatch logs. So here we are. And as you can see, we have the value of that query string parameter. Now I want to store this token within DynamoDB. So what we can do is let's go back to Lambda function. So all we need to do is add one more item. So here we have connection ID, correct? And now what we will do is we will add one more key value pair within item. We will name it as token, for example followed by the value that we want to store. That's again going to be a dictionary followed by a type. So I will say S that is basically the string. And followed by colon Q S, right? So that's what we want to store basically. So let's save this. And if everything is correct, then we will have that information within DynamoDB. So let's have a look. So right now we will be having one connection ID. Let's close this and reload this. Now we don't have anything. Now let's go ahead and run this. And it says unexpected server error 502. Obviously, uh, I think there's some problem with this dynamo db so let's see what we have within cloudwatch logs so it says name error name queue is not defined i think lambda function is not saved properly let me reload this As you can see here, there's only Q instead of QS. And now let's save this function again. And let's run this command one more time. So now we are connected. Let's go ahead and look at the DynamoDB table. Let me reload this. So now as you can see, we have another item that is token with that value that is some token. Correct. So this is how you can pass query string parameter uh, within WebSocket API while creating or establishing the connection. So as I said, you can pass multiple query string parameter. Correct. So let me show you that too. Let me close this. 
So we will not be storing that information within DynamoDB. We will only go with the token. So here I am passing token equal to some token. For example, I want some query equal to some query maybe. But before we go ahead and hit enter, we need to edit the Lambda function in order to display that information. So I will copy line number six. I will paste it over here. Now, instead of token, we want to grab. What is that? Query. So I will replace token with query. I will rename the variable. I will say QS1 and I will say print QS as well as print QS1. So that we have both the information. Let's save this. Let's go ahead to terminal and hit enter. And it's connected and we should have both the query string parameter. Let's have a look within CloudWatch logs. So here, as you can see, we have some token as well as some query as a value of two query string parameters, correct? So this is how you can fetch the query string parameter within Lambda function, correct? So well, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. And as usual, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.